Hi, I'm Mike Ryan. Recently, we had a comment on one of our blog videos suggesting that I do a video about black web turquoise from different mines. And I thought, well, that'd be a great video. So that's what we're going to do. You know, in the early days of turquoise mining in this country that we cover in Turquoise in America Part 1, Great American Turquoise Rush, 1890 to 1910, the only turquoise that the market wanted was the clear sky blue. And the, those of you who have ever tried to mine turquoise know that with really only a couple of exceptions, that just doesn't really come about that often. And that exception was Sleeping Beauty, where most of the turquoise was found in that clear blue. But generally, it's going to come in matrix. And this was a challenge for those early miners. In fact, in the famous book, Turquoise by Joseph Pogue, he states that in 1905, the average price for high-grade turquoise, which would have been the clear sky blue, was $15. Went from $10 to $20, $25. Well, you think, well, gosh, that was cheap. Well, $15 in 1905 is probably over $300 now, uh, which only the top gem grade turquoise from a very few mines will reach that level. Pogue also said that for the matrix turquoise, it would sell for about a dollar. So that was the price differential then. But even so, a dollar then is probably $18, $20 now, something around, around that range. So Turquoise now is uh, relatively inexpensive. And that's why we found in the dumps there was lots of matrix turquoise that was left by the miners because they only wanted the sky blue. That turquoise was then utilized in the second period that we cover in part two of Turquoise in America, 1910 to 1990. And we tell how all of this turquoise matrix came to market. It can be said that while turquoise is very subjective and everybody has their own favorites, the dark web is generally considered to be the most favored, and that is because it has the highest price. So what we're going to do today is look at some dark web turquoise, very high grade, from different turquoise mines. I hope you enjoy it. I thought we'd uh, start here by taking a look at some very high grade dark web and really pointing out a real challenge in the marketplace for the turquoise buyer because I would think most people looking at this would be hard pressed to identify where these stones came from. We'll start here at the top here, and when you start with high-grade black web turquoise, sort of the standard, certainly in terms of price, is Lander Blue. And we see these three cabs of Lander Blue, which would be considered very high-grade, gem-grade quality of Lander Blue, that would really get, perhaps, a, the highest price you could find in the marketplace. I haven't checked it recently, but I would say probably you'd be, be difficult to find any turquoise like this for under $300 a carat. And it's probably worth a lot more than that. If we go down to the next level, this is a very rare mine with very low production. And it is called Starburst. Starburst turquoise. And this is a Nevada, uh, not in Lander County, but in Esmeralda County. And there was just really a handful of this grade that came out. But you see the challenge in the marketplace because if I mentioned Starburst, nobody knows it. But if I took that turquoise and said, yeah, that's Lander Blue, very difficult to 
discern the difference unless you've seen lots of lander blue. And then it becomes pretty evident. You can really tell uh, there's a certain radiance in lander blue. There's a formation of the little tiny turquoise nodules in there. And as I've said before, a lot of the lander blue had undercutting in the matrix. So Bucky and Joe Edgar, who cut that stone, had to fill a lot of that in. In contrast, this starburst has a much harder matrix, very, very hard stone. Finally, we go down here at the bottom and we see this bottom row. And this is Chinese turquoise, very high grade dark web Chinese. But again, for the average buyer, if someone were to claim this were Lander Blue and were saying, you know, gosh, we'll give you a bargain. You can have this for $200 a carat. When in actuality, uh, this grade of Chinese, I would say you'd be hard pressed to get $40, $40 a carat for it, even though it certainly should sell for much more. So here we have our first example of three different mines and all showing the same very high grade dark web. In this uh, grouping uh, in our exploration of dark web turquoise, we're going to see a continuation of how many of the dark web can look very similar and then also some pretty distinctive differences that will really jump out as you're becoming familiar with different turquoise mines. We start here at the top, and this is from Indian Mountain. Now, some would consider this the highest grade of Indian Mountain. Uh, for myself, I, I think the lighter blue red web is, is really the, the highest gem grade, but certainly look how similar this dark web turquoise is to what we saw in looking at Lander Blue, Starburst, and the Chinese from Hubei. I failed to mention, I think that Hubei turquoise is most likely from the Yungai Temple Mine. So when we come down here, we see Red Mountain. And Red Mountain really has a kind of distinctive look to it, certainly in its more prevalent uh, red web, uh, which is understandable because Indian Mountain, Red Mountain, not that far apart. But again, we have this distinctive blue. And I think you can see here probably a little difference in the color. The saturation of the blue is different from the Indian Mountain. But again, very similar looks in terms of the uh, turquoise formation and the dark matrix. When we come down here, we're going to go across the valley, across Caracol Lake Valley, and up the Shoshone Mountain Range to find Nevada Blue. Now we're getting into a, certainly still a dark web turquoise, but look at the difference in both the color and the nodule formation of the turquoise compared to the much tighter pattern we saw in both Red Mountain and uh, Indian Mountain. So that's sort of a distinctive look for Nevada Blue. Finally, we come down, no, not finally, second to last, we come down here to what was the original uh, dark web. And at that time, I mentioned in the introduction how the market wanted just a sky blue and the miners were not finding it. So they wanted to develop a market for this. So in the advertising of the age, we start to hear mention of the beautiful matrix. And we tell that story in Turquoise in America, part two, 1910 to 1990. And this came from Mineral Park, which we now know as Kingman. And uh, I would think, I'm not sure where this turquoise, whether it was Ithaca Peak or Turquoise Mountain, I'm gonna say it's Turquoise Mountain because I'm pretty sure this was mined by Marty and Josh Colbaugh more recently and uh, came from where they're working on Turquoise Mountain. But you can see this distinctive pattern, uh, very hard pressed to differentiate it from this or Indian Mountain or Lander Blue or Starburst. Again, in that grouping of that type of 
dark web turquoise, which at the time in the 1910 period or so would have been called cobweb. Now, finally, down here, we see something that is very, very different and you don't see very often, which is from number eight, the dark web from number eight. And, and uh, you, you have some, the most expensive number eight came from that dark web, which really came because it was in uh, clay pockets of black clay. Number eight was a pocket mine, which meant the nuggets were found in clay pockets and there was very little um, of that dark web found, and we tell that story as well in Turquoise in America Part 2. And this is just a few examples of what that would represent, but it's very rare, very sought after in the marketplace. Okay, in this final grouping, we get to see on the top two lines, these are two mines that really not that well known at all, although they hopefully will become much more well known as people watch these video and see some of the quality of turquoise that is coming out of there. Unfortunately, production is minuscule, minuscule. So we start here on the top and we have the black web gem. And we're gonna be doing a video featuring Philip Chamblas and Helen and Richard Shaw discussing their turquoise and verisite wines that will feature black web gem as well as this extraordinary turquoise from the Black Widow. And uh, just exceptional quality. Unfortunately, the amount of production is just so minuscule, it makes Lander Blue seem like a high production mine. And uh, this is really known because it's very highly silicated. The two cabs on the outside of the center cab there are unbacked. And generally when you're a cutter and the higher the grade, even though it's very hard, it will take a hard polish, you got a lot of risk there because turquoise even as hard as it can get, you can drop it, you can, you can there can be an unseen fracture in there or a fissure and the thing can crack. And here you've got this very, extraordinarily rare turquoise and you don't want that to happen. So oftentimes cutters will back very, very thin to add as least amount of weight possible, but it's really done as an insurance policy. As we go down, now we're gonna see two well-known turquoise mines. This is the Cheyenne, which was originally known as the hidden treasure when it was first located as far back as the first decade of the previous century. This is now owned by Jesse Tom Robbins. Jesse, of course, is a, a, a very well-known Indian jeweler and a Native American jeweler, creates beautiful, beautiful jewelry. If you're not familiar with it, you really should. And get it now because like turquoise, it's just gonna go up in price. But when they bought this from the Audisons bought this claim from the Audisons. Tony told um, Jesse that they would make up the price of the purchase price just by working the dumps. And that turned out to be accurate. And one of the first nuggets they found, they cut these three stones. Extraordinarily high grade, very hard Cheyenne turquoise. And uh, I just talked to Jesse recently and he said, we've never found another nugget like that. So that gives you an idea of really how rare turquoise at this grade is. Finally, we're going to see what I consider the most rare of all turquoise, actually, and that is dark web coming from Candelaria. I, I don't know, maybe others have seen this and it's just been hidden from me but I just have not seen this coming from Candelaria. And it's extraordinary. And uh, I know of its provenance because these all came from Wayne Nelson, who was the only one who ever had the uh, concession at Candelaria from the Nerco Mining Company at the Candelaria Silver Mine. So I see this beautiful turquoise. And I think, that cab on the far right 
is perhaps as high a grade of turquoise as I've ever seen. Uh, we're going to be publishing a, a grading system in a few months once I get the courage to deal with all the controversy that that always brings up. Um, but by my grading system, which you'll learn about later on, uh, this is as high a grade as I've ever assigned. Absolutely extraordinary piece of turquoise. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing different turquoise mines showing the very high grade dark web turquoise. <laughs>